Morning Year 10, let's dive straight in with this take 10. I want you to pause the video, time yourself for 10 minutes and see how high your score can go. If you start with the orange, they're worth more points. Okay, well done. I'll ask you to go away and check your answers for this, but the answer to the top left box is obviously B because we remember how to spell simile by writing smile with an I before the M. Okay, so today we're going to look at the poem Sonnet 29, I Think of Thee. So please get your anthology and a pen. Once you've got that, let's get started. What is a sonnet? You've got 30 seconds. Think about how many lines it has, what kind of meter it has, what it's typically about, where you might have seen them before. There's a challenge on there too. Great, so a sonnet is a form of poetry which has 14 lines and is written in iambic pentameter, so de dum de dum de dum they're generally about love, and I think that you will have seen some before in Romeo and Juliet and possibly some of Shakespeare's sonnets before. OK, so the poem is called Sonnet 29, I Think of Thee. Let's read it first and then we will start to annotate it. I think of thee, my thoughts do twine and bud about thee as wild vines about a tree. Put out broad leaves, and soon there's naught to see, except the straggling green which hides the wood. Yet, oh, my palm tree, be it understood, I will not have my thoughts instead of thee, who art dearer, better. Rather instantly renew thy presence, as a strong tree should rustle thy boughs and set thy trunk all bare, and let these bands of greenery which ensphere thee drop heavily down, burst shattered everywhere because in this deep joy to see and hear thee and breathe within thy shadowy a new air i do not think of thee i am too near thee so the poem begins with this kind of exclamation i think of thee with that exclamation uh, there can you remember what it's called when we get punctuation in the middle of the line we call that sejura. So this opening statement, I think of thee, is quite an arresting beginning and it could suggest that she is frustrated because she just can't stop thinking about this man or maybe she's excited um, or maybe she's in some kind of uh, pain, like struggling with the fact that this man is absent. We then get a lot of natural imagery. So she says her thoughts twine and bud uh, about him so her thoughts keep growing like wild vines about a tree and we get references to leaves in the wood etc now this line is particularly powerful and I've given you an image here because I think we can say a few things about it first of all in terms of technique what technique is it as wild vines about a tree it's a civilly and I think we could say, first of all, that it shows us, because vines grow quickly, that she's having a lot of thoughts about him. The second thing it might suggest is that he is the main focus in her life. So this is probably quite reflective of the time and gender balance. And all of her thoughts are wrapping around him. And these verbs, twine and bud, suggest that her love is flowering and growing and developing. And in this poem, although this here is an example of a simile, it continues throughout the poem. And so we can also say it's an extended metaphor, this idea that her thoughts are wrapped around this tree trunk. So she then says, I will not have my thoughts instead of thee. And she says later in thy poem, uh, renew thy presence, thy being, you know, your. So... She doesn't want to just be consumed by these thoughts. She really wants him to return. And if he does return, we get this idea that she will feel 
regenerated. There's then quite a controversial line in the poem where she's basically saying, you know, let all these vines hang loose and let us see the trunk. So she says, set thy trunk all bare. And that's in keeping with the metaphor that we had, you know, the extended metaphor of her thoughts being the vines. But there's also a sort of erotic reference there where it looks as if she's commanding him to expose a part of his body. So it's quite um, erotic, which would have been quite controversial for the Victorian times. She says, you know, once the vines have dropped heavily down, things will burst, shatter everywhere. And this also is quite sexually loaded vocabulary, which is implying a sort of sexual satisfaction once she's reunited with him. She also talks about breath and air in these next few lines. Um, suggesting that he really is critical to her life and that feeling of regenerated once he returns. Finally, at the very un end of the poem, uh, we get the cyclical ending. So it feels a bit like a circle where she started the poem by saying, I think of thee, and she ends the poem by saying, I do not think of thee. And so we get this sense that there's been some sort of resolution. So maybe he's returned or she's managed to adjust to the fact that he is absent. It's very likely that the poet Browning um, is writing about her own life. She was happily married and it's a very passionate poem about how much her partner's love nourishes her and how much she loves being around him. She's urging him to return and there's definitely sexual desire which is expressed in the poem. It's in a sonnet form because we have the 14 lines and obviously it's about love, although there have been some adjustments. The uh, couplet is extended, which means she's sort of prepared to break the rules a little bit. You'll notice in the poem when she says, um, just trying to find it for you. She says something and she says, as a strong tree should. She's suggesting here that she wants her husband to take control. Renew thy presence as a strong tree should. You know, you're a man, come back and sort of take control. I want to um, wrap up by just reading you an example paragraph about the use of metaphor. Barrett Browning's image of her husband as a strong tree sees her as a vine growing around him, which implies her acceptance of 19th century attitudes to male dominance. However, the openness of her passionate imagery as she demands that he sets his trunk all bare and the fact that she actually eloped with him in the first place suggests that she's not afraid to break convention by expressing her desires. OK, so as we always do, let's wrap up with a bit of context. She wrote an impressive 44 sonnets to her husband. And in this one, she's obviously talking about her thoughts of him. We've already touched on this, but it would have been quite controversial during the Victorian era to um, write about such intimate topics. What I'd like you to do now for the final part of the lesson is complete this paragraph. Browning uses natural imagery to express her obsessive thoughts about her absent husband. It says, so I want you to spend eight minutes finishing this paragraph. Then I'd like you to do the lesson on the next poem, which should be the final poem that needs annotating your anthology. And then what you'll find on Show My Homework for this week's homework to be submitted is a quiz which is going to ask you multiple choice questions about this poem and the next poem that you learn about. And then there'll be the extension of watching the GCSE pods and adding to your notes. All right. Thanks for a really good class. Bye.